Number one, here are four graphs. Match each graph with the quadratic equation that it represents. So if we take a look at each of these equations, you saw some of these in your lesson today that had X's in both, but then no constant. Um, number two is a little bit different. So number two doesn't have an X in both and it's got a negative. So this negative right here is gonna flip the graph over. So we automatically can see that that one matches graph C. Then when we look at the rest of them, based on kind of what you did in your lesson, you know that there's an X in both of these. Okay, so we could factor that out if we wanted. So X squared divided by X is X, and then X divided by X is one. So this way, if we multiplied the X back in or distributed it, we would get X squared plus X. So we see that we actually have an X intercept of zero and then an X intercept of negative one. So this one's gonna cross at zero and negative one. So that's gonna be graph A. And if you kind of follow that pattern here, then number three has an X and then this is gonna be negative one. So this is gonna cross at zero and positive one if we were to factor it and look at it. So X times X would be X squared and X times negative one would be that negative X. So you get that this one crosses at zero and positive one. And that's going to be graph D. So then that leaves um, number four to be graph B, but we can look at it and make sure. So this will be X times X and X times three if we were to factor it. So then we'd have zero and negative three as our X intercept. So that does match graph B. Number two, complete the table without graphing the equations. So we don't wanna graph them. So again, you can factor them or if you've started to notice a pattern, you can use that as well. So off to the side, we see that there's an X in both terms. So we'll factor that out. So X times X gives us that X squared and X times 12 would give us that 12 X. So that means our intercepts are gonna be zero and then negative 12, because negative 12 plus 12 gives us zero. So those are gonna be your two X intercepts. Then remember that the X coordinate is in the middle of the intercepts. So you're gonna take your intercepts. So you're gonna take intercept one plus intercept two, and then you're gonna divide those by two, because you're gonna just find the middle of them. So zero plus negative 12 is negative 12, and then we'll take that divided by two and we end, whoops, and we end up with negative six for the X coordinate of the vertex. Then the next one, you would have zero and positive three if you're kind of starting to notice the pattern. If you need to factor, don't worry about it. Okay, so X times X gives us that X squared and then X times negative three would give us that negative three X. Then we can see kind of what would make each of these zero? So zero and positive three. Then here we do zero plus three and then divide that by two. And we would end up with 1.5 for that X in, or for the X coordinate of the vertex. Next one. So this one, um, you wanna be careful because of that negative out front there. So let's factor the negative X out so negative X times positive X gives us that negative X squared. And then negative X times negative 16 will get us that positive 16 X. So then this would still be zero for the X intercept that makes that first factor zero. And then we'd have positive 16. And then zero plus 16 is just 16, right? And then 16 divided by two gives us eight. And then the last one here, so maybe you're trying to use the pattern and so you're saying zero and negative 24 because you noticed this negative out front here. Again, you can factor it. So take a negative X out. So negative X times X gives us that negative X squared. 
and negative x times positive 24 gets us that negative 24x. 0 gets us 0 for the first factor, and negative 24 gets us 0 for the second factor. Add those together and divide by 2, and you get negative 12. Number three, here's a graph that represents y equals x squared. Describe what would happen to the graph if the original equation were changed to this. Predict the x and y intercepts of the graph and the quadrant that the vertex is located in. So for this one, again, maybe you can use the pattern that you're seeing. Otherwise, if you need to factor it to help, okay, you can say this is going to be x. And then x times x gives us that x squared. And x times negative 6 gets us that negative 6x. So it factors to here. So then you can think about what the x-intercepts would be, right? So your x-intercepts would be at 0 and 6. So we know that this is going to cross here at 0 and at 6. And I can actually just kind of draw over this and actually move it if I wanted to. So now we know that this is going to move like this. So we know it's going to move to the right and down. Okay, so it's going to move to the right and down. So that it has those two intercepts. And even if you couldn't grab it and move it, right, you can just think of connecting, you know, putting a parabola so that it goes through those intercepts. And then that helps us to imagine, or in this case, actually see that the vertex is going to be in this quadrant here, and this is the fourth quadrant. So in case you forgot, this is the first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, and this is the fourth quadrant. So then it says sketch a graph of the equation, which I already did on the same coordinate plane as y equals x squared. So then we have that. Number four, select all equations whose graph opens upward. So opening upward means that you have a positive x squared term. Okay, when it's in standard form, you have a positive x squared term. So for part A, that's not true because that's a negative x squared. So that's going to be upside down. Same with B, you see this negative 5 with the x squared. So that means it's going to open downward. Okay, if we look at this one, we have something squared. And we know that anytime we square something, it's going to kick back um, overall a positive. And we can kind of see if we wrote it out, this would be 2x squared minus 1. And then 2x, or sorry, 2x minus 1 times 2x minus 1. So we would end up multiplying these two together for our x squared term. So that's going to give us 4x squared plus some other stuff, right? But we don't care about this other stuff for whether it opens up or down. We only care about that x squared term, and that's positive. You could also look into this by looking at area model. So you'd have 2x plus 1, and you'd have 2x plus 1. And again, only this x squared term matters to determine if it opens up or down. So that 4x squared makes sure that it opens upward. So then for part D, Okay, when we, you know, we're going to multiply out four different things, right? Because of this area model, you have four different things that you're going to end up multiplying here. But the one that matters is when we multiply the x's together. So negative x times x is going to give us a negative x squared, which means that this is going to open downward. And again, you can, you know, go through the whole process. You can write this out, but it's only the x squared part that's going to matter for whether it opens up or down. So you could get 2 here. Whoops, not 21. Okay, you could get 2 here. You could get negative 2x. You can get x. And then again, you're getting negative x squared. And this is the box that matters. And then e has a positive x squared. So that one opens upward as well. 
Number five, um, write an equation for a function that can be represented by each given graph, then use graphing technology, technology to check your equation. So if we look here, we know the intercepts in this one are at zero and at negative seven. Okay, so that means that our two factors, okay, when we plug these in, need to be zero. So x is just going to be uh, one of the factors, because if I plug zero in, that's zero. Then this one, when I plug negative seven in for x, this needs to be zero. So that means that this must be x plus seven, so that when I plug negative seven in, it equals zero. So that would be the equation for that one. You've got intercepts here, again, at four and negative four. So for the one on the left, you would want it to say x plus four, so that when you plug negative four in, you get zero. And for the four, you would want it to say x minus four, so that when you plug it in, it equals zero. You also, for this one, could have recognized that if the intercepts are just opposites of each other, you can look at the y-intercept and you could just do it in transformation form too. And you could say x squared minus 16 if you wanted when those are directly um, the same distance away from the middle or from that x-axis. So then this next one has intercepts at negative nine and three. So this one doesn't work like this, okay, because they're different, they're not opposites of each other. Um, but so we would want x plus 9, so that negative 9 plus 9 is 0. And then for this one, we would have x minus 3, so that 3 minus 3 is 0. And then you can go and check those um, on a graph on your own. Number 6, match each quadratic expression that is written as a product with the equivalent expression expanded. All right, so I'm just going to draw a little box over here, okay, that you can do for area model. So now each of these um, problems, I just want to show you a couple of things. So you can go x plus 3 here and x plus 4 here, right? And ultimately, um, you know, you multiply the x's together or the first terms together for this first box. So we know this one's going to be an x squared and we multiply these last numbers together for the last box, right? So you'd do x times x, and here we'd have four times three. Now I haven't done these middle terms yet, right? So we still have to figure those out, but let's look at these answers to see if this um, narrowed our answers down. So we know it has to be x squared, so it can't be this one, and it can't be this one. So it can't be two or three, so it's one or four, but one has a last term of 21 and four has a last term of 12. So that means it has to be number four. And then if we were to do these middle boxes, right? So if we were to do these inner, oops, these inner boxes here, you would have gotten three X and four X. So three plus four gives you that seven middle term. So we would have ended up with that um, if we multiplied it all the way out, right? So if we kind of use that idea, and you can for sure go and multiply them all out like this, but when it's multiple choice, um, sometimes I like to do less work. So this is going to be an x squared. Well, there's only one x squared term left, okay, as my front number. These other ones have a 3x squared. So this has to be number one. And if you look at the last terms multiplied, 3 and 7, that gives you that 21 as well. So now C and D, when we multiply those first terms, are going to both give us 3x squared, right? So both of those are getting a 3x squared, which makes sense because these both have a 3x squared. So then if we look at multiplying the final numbers, that'll help us with the last part and we won't have to figure out the middle term. So seven times one would give us seven. So D is number three. Where in C, you're gonna end up at the last term of having four times three, which is 12, and that's equation number two.
Number seven, when buying a home, many mortgage companies require a down payment of 20% of the price of the house. What is the down payment of, or what is the down payment on a $125,000 home? So what we want to figure out is what's 20% of $125,000. So when you're doing calculations and you're actually multiplying these out, you need this to be a decimal, right? So we would divide by 100 and you would get 0.2 as 20%. And then of means multiplication. So we would multiply this times the 125,000. And this would give us um, $25,000 as the down payment. So 20% of 125,000 is $25,000. Number eight, a bank, lo a bank loans $4,000 to a customer at 9.5% annual interest rate. Write an expression to represent how much the customer will owe in dollars after five years without payment. So we're doing $4,000 is our initial amount, okay? So our initial value. So if you remember, the equation that we're using here is really like the initial value times the rate or the growth factor, and then to the time period. So our initial value is 4,000. Our growth factor is really you owe 100% plus this 9.5%. So that's gonna be 109.5%. So then we'll divide this by 100 to get the growth factor of 1.095. So that's what's gonna go in here. And then our time period is five years without payment. And it didn't want us to actually calculate a value for this, just write the expression. So this is all that you needed.